I think this is important. Keeping people in in the in the flow, in in fo focusing on doing the work creatively to find a solution. I think this is really key. Hello out there and welcome to our weekly Ask the CEO Q&A session here at the Virtual Frontier. Today's topic of our Q&A session is the tech talent shortage and how to solve it. Are you short on talent within your organization? Welcome to the new normal. As discussed previously on this podcast with different experts, the overall shortage of talent will increase even more drastically in the coming years. Let's find out how you could solve this issue, establishing creative environments and a sense of community inside your company. See you in just the flash on the other side. Yeah, hello, Manu. Welcome to a new week, new session here at the Virtual Frontier, our Q&A session uh, 25, actually. Um, on our topic today is, uh, and uh, with not, nothing, nothing really new, uh, uh, tech talent shortage and uh, how to overcome it uh, in the future. Uh, and uh, the heavy part on this today is, uh, or what I would like to discuss, is the part of creativity and, and com community inside your organization and how to enable it and what, what you can possibly do as a company owner or as a leader in, inside your team or organization. Um, But um, maybe to start it off, um, could you define for yourself what you find um, behind the, the term uh, creativity? Hmm. I think the ability to solve problems. I think it's the ability to, not sure if it is the ability to understand and analyze problems. I think this is more analytical skill, but then if you have a well-articulated problem and you are able to find different options for solutions, I would say this is, this is creativity. Of course, um, art is also kind of creativity, but if we are talking in the context of business, I think it's, yeah, finding solutions for problems. Yeah. No. Why is it uh, as, a, as a company that you probably can uh, or you, you can't uh, really foster a creativity because this is something personal that comes out of each individual? Um, but how can you lay the, the ground or make space that creativity can appear sometimes? Yes, yes, yes. There are different studies, right, that creativity comes up in moments when you are totally relaxed and calm mental creativity and you cannot be creative under stress right on the other side i'm really curious about that because there are also some some scenarios where people find the best solutions when they are like with a back against the wall i mean i i experienced that in in the scenario when when i almost crashed my business or my yeah with a project and i had to find a solution how to get the project done while we tried and tried and tried over for a month to find a solution and we didn't find a solution. And then I just had like four days left and I had to find a solution and that created immense stress, but it also created a great creativity inside of me and I found a great solution that completely changed everything in my business. So I'm not sure. I think it's not a good idea to put people under stress every day so they become more creative. I think this doesn't work. Um, I think it's really, yeah, you, 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 you allow people to be relaxed and find solutions. But sometimes I think establishing something like creative sprints where you have to go to find a solution in the next week. Okay. And you just try, you don't stress yourself out within the week, but you really try to find a solution in this week for a specific problem. I think this can also foster creativity. I think that is an interesting topic to explore and to test it because that's just my idea. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You, you already, uh, um, picked into two of my following up questions. Like uh, you explained how, how, how and when you feel uh, creative, uh, interesting. Uh, and, and maybe we can dig into that, um, how you can really uh, as a company or organization, um, open up the spaces for creativity in a, in a structured way. So, so there, there is space, there is space for it. Uh, um, because 
it happens often that people are like in their in their hustle and they're running and they're doing business and and um there is not really the space for it so do you have any ideas how to make really space for that in, inside your team yeah i think one important part or fact is that people like what they do because mm. when you like what they what you do then it's fun for you doing it and when it's fun for you doing it you just do it longer because it's fun and then the odds increase that you find a solution for the problem so i think this is something to choose people in a way that they say yes to a job where they really like what they are doing and also i think it is very very important to clearly shape and craft and articulate the problem that you want people to find a solution for because the more vague the problem is the harder it is to find a creative solution you might like find a solution but then it's not a fit to the problem as the problem is not really clear so i think problem awareness is the key for being creative it's the first thing you you want to have so that people can become creative and find a solution for this problem so this is important and then allow people to be in 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 deep work mode in focus mode without like they being constantly distracted by people asking questions that are completely outside of this creativity zone not related to the solution or the problem then um, putting immense stress on people with like you have to deliver in this time and deadlines 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 right without giving them room and time to breathe um i think this is important keeping people in in the in the flow in in fo focusing on doing the work creatively to find a solution i think this is really key when you want your team performance to increase allow them as much focus time as possible and i think the same is relevant for creativity mm -hmm. Mm, speaking more on the technical side, um, what could be done or how, how can you help and support um, people in your team or in your company um, first to set up their, their own goals, of course, aligned with the, with the company goals, and then um, help to help them um, to reach them on their own? Yeah, I think it's the same mechanism if you want to reach a goal and you have no idea how to achieve it and what is the first step then it's a knowledge problem so people should be able to ask like an experienced mentor a coach an advisor consultant whatever um to help them find the solution and create like a roadmap towards the solution i think this is a very important thing as many people are trying hard to achieve something but they don't know what exactly they want to achieve and they don't know where they are right now how far they are away from achieving this goal and very often they don't know what is the current problem that prevents them from achieving this goal. And I think this problem solution awareness is something that you can build into your culture by like um, motivating other people, just asking questions, either questions to clarify the problem or either questions to clarify where a person stuck, right? And doesn't find the next step towards the solution. I think these kind of conversations are very important for people to engage their brain around problems and around solutions. And you don't do this if you always tell people what they should do. Like the typical thing, delegating by tasks, you to do this, do that, do that. And they just say yes without questioning why that is important. And then they just deliver the task and it's done. This is just like stupid executions, just doing the work that you were given to. But this is nothing that helps people um, become more creative to find solutions for problems and i think yeah that's that's a typical coaching culture approach which helps people to be more solution focused mm -hmm. mm, when we look on on the um, group or team level side um what could i do as a, a team lead or or a owner um, when it comes to the group constellation. So there are different types of, of personality um, and, and characters inside my, my, my team that, that is already existing. So how can I maximize the, the potential for creativity, let's say, um, when we uh, speak about the, the constellation of these uh, different groups or teams? Mm -hmm. I think a diverse team setup, you need to have um, 
diverse personalities. So there is this DISC model, right? You have people that have different attributes related to their personality. Typically, it's four. It's like the green one who is very family oriented. Then it's the yellow one who is very like extrovert person that um, is, is good with speaking at stages, etc. Then you have the blue person who is a very analytical person, really diving deep into numbers, facts and details, and then work with that. And then there is the red person. This is the person pushing towards a solution, the person that cannot accept that there is a problem, which is typically like me. I, I'm hmm. poor in accepting there is a problem long, longer than a week, and I always try to solve it, solve it, solve it. And yeah. if you bring these people together, then the red person is pushing towards the solution, while the, the blue person will say, um, stop for a minute and let's first do an analysis of what is the current problem exactly and which solution do we want to have exactly, right? And then you can run further, but you are sure and certain that you run into the right direction. While the green person will say, hey guys, okay, we now know the problem and we are pushing forward. But what about our people? We also need to ensure that we take people on the journey. So this is more the, the family or um, yeah, relationship focused person, right? Mm. And if you bring all these people, these different characters into a team, then you can be sure that you have covered all, all parts and from different angles. Right. So um, let's assume we have consolidated this group or, or team. Uh, in, in a broader perspective, and this is, uh, comes uh, apparently more and more uh, important or um, at least visible, um, a community or the sense of belonging inside uh, an organization or, or company becomes more and more important. Now people are working all remote and um, everyone is like distributed in different places. So why, why should I, uh, as a company owner, like have an eye on that and, and uh, pay attention to these uh, circumstances that it's really important to to create this kind of community or or belonging inside my company. I think because it's a it's a human need that people want to feel connected to other people and to be a part of something that's bigger than themselves. And if you have people that just work like you, look, I I just described the benefit of bringing diverse personalities into a team. And if you don't have a sense of belonging, then they just do work by themselves and they don't have they don't have honest disagreements, right? The, the red person pushing forward, ignoring everyone else, just moving forward towards the solution. If, if this person is only working him or herself alone without feeling a belonging to these other people, then they will just do their own work. And then there is no impact of like green people and blue people that somehow impact his or her action. If everyone just works on his or her own problems and there is no engagement in the group and you don't like to engage if you don't like people and you don't like people if you don't have a sense of belonging, right? Then I think you don't, you just have individuals, you don't have a team. I think that's right. the main point. Yeah. So yeah, you should yeah, care yeah. about that if you want to have higher performance than the performance of individuals. Um, and then probably my, my, my last question from my side today, Manu, is, um, what, what have you experienced since you work with uh, global talents around the world uh, with, with different cultural backgrounds, different personal backgrounds? What, what has this done to, to your uh, organization uh, talking about uh, creativity and like different inf influences? You, 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 you get where I want to uh, go. <laughs> I don't get where you want to go, but I understand the question. Yeah. And I'm just wondering because it's, it's a complete different thing. I mean, that's so fascinating because I know that whenever I have a problem, I know that I find a person that understands the problem even better than I do. And then it's so much easier to find a solution with an experienced person that has much more experience in solving these kind of problems than I have. So you can really shorten the path from problem to solution by finding a person that helps you understand the problem better and then contribute with experience to the solution. So, and of course that, that changed a lot because I'm able to solve problems much faster, which is my personality. As I said, I cannot accept problems retained for longer than a week. So that gives me the ability to access global talent and solve problems faster and progress faster with people that know how to do it instead of me just assuming that I know it, but I never did it. So I don't have the experience. 
that's right. that's a complete it's like if you if you want to build something and you have access to the right tools right then you have huge leverage you don't need to like take your fist and put the nail into the wall you have a hammer and it goes so much easier without pain and that's the same if you have access to like the right people at the right time with the skills that are required to solve your problem and then it's just it goes smoothly easier faster with less pain awesome any uh, thoughts you would like to add manu yeah i mean that that's what i already elaborated on if you want to solve a problem the it, you, you cannot spend enough time to really make it very clear what is the problem right and don't just push forward to some solution better spend like 20 percent more of your time really trying to articulate the exact problem and articulating the exact goal that you want to follow and then it's so much easier for people to identify if they have the right skills to solve this or if you like need to hire someone else and then just go out and try it when you know the problem you want to solve then it's also easy to define a role like a character of a person with the experience and the skill this person needs to bring right that's typically your role description and then you can find these people easily just if you have no idea what's your problem and you don't know which kind of person you need to solve the problem then you won't find a, pro a person that can solve the problem as you don't know what it is right there is a break in this chain and th as there is more than enough talent out there so i think developing your skill in being very analytical about the problem and then which solution you want is the number one key to leverage global talent period <laughs> periods i think with that we close it and uh, okay. people will understand pretty well what uh, what it takes uh, to get there Manu, thank you very much for your, for your time. And I will say we see each other next week. Yeah, thank you. Q&A session. See you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye. We hope you found the session helpful. Head back to our in-depth blog article on solving the tech talent shortage with workplace creativity. What did we miss in this conversation? How can we do better? Let us know in the comments and reviews. We are happy to engage. And before you leave, hit the subscribe button, give it a thumb up, and share this session around with your friends and colleagues. Sign up for the free business builder training on flashup.io and learn more about how to scale with your business at any time, work with global top talents and make work better. On behalf of the team here at the Virtual Frontier, I want to thank you for listening. So until the next episode, keep exploring new frontiers.